Today I'm going to show you how to automate the process of watermarking your images for the web with a couple actions and the batch script. So the first thing we need to do is decide what size we want the images for the web. So hit Control Alt I or Command Option I if you're on Mac and that'll bring up image size. I'm going to resize by the height. So I'll just grab height here and type in 1200 pixels. This will be about a 4x6 at 300 pixels per inch. Now the reason we're going to do this first is we want to be able to make our logo to the correct size that looks best for the size image you have. And preferably this will be done with the pen tool. So if you need to change the size of the logo or watermark at any time, it won't lose quality. Pen tool's vector, so it's not pixel based. So if you're just doing something simple, you'd probably set this um, to no fill and set it to stroke maybe white or whatever color you want. Then you would just make your little design here. I'm just going to make a simple B for this tutorial here. And about like that. And our stroke is going to be white. And we'll change our size up maybe to, oops, just type it in here, maybe about five pixels. That looks pretty good. And now we can just go over here and if you want to change the blending options, like uh, maybe a little bit of contour. We can do that. So anyway, once you have this made, you want to right click on this layer and we are going to duplicate the layer to a new document. I'm just gonna add a new layer, drag it behind, and I'm gonna fill that with 50% gray so we can see it better. And what we need to do now is just crop the image and we'll just crop it down until it snaps to the outer edges of our logo. Once we've got that and we've done any edits we want, we can just go ahead and discard this background layer. And we'll want to save this as either a TIFF or a Photoshop document. I like to do it as a Photoshop document myself. So we'll just save this and name it whatever we'd like. For me, I'm just going to save it as B watermark. That'll work for now. All right, so we got that saved. We can go back over here. And what we're going to be doing is placing the image. We can place linked, but we don't really need to do that because this is going to be an automated process. We're not going to be really changing anything at a later time. So I'm going to just use place embed. Select our watermark here and it places. So now that is going to be the starting point of our action. All right, I got my full size original image opened again, and this is the time we start recording our action. First step is to create a new set. We'll just name this watermark tutorial and then we need to create a new action. And this is the important part. I'm going to just name this one landscape and hit record. The first step in our action needs to be resize. So we'll hit control alt I and keeping in mind that we did 1200 for four by six as before, we'll do that again. Now we'll type it in the height because our action is actually going to remember that. So 1200 and we'll hit OK. Our next step is File, Place, Embedded. We'll select our watermark PSD here and we'll place it. Now we can just hit Enter. And then the next step is Control A or Command A to make a selection. With the Move tool, which is V on your keyboard, you can use these options to align with the bottom and the left or anywhere you'd like. And then you just deselect. The next step we need to do is Control T or Command T to transform it again. And since I don't want this on the very bottom and very edge, I'm just going to use the arrows on my keyboard to nudge this up. This makes it easy to keep track of how much you moved it each way. Now we could go ahead and adjust the opacity or the blend mode if we wanted. For now, I'm just going to leave this at normal and 100% opacity. Once we have everything as we want it, we'll go up to layer and flatten image. One final step, since this is for web, we need to go up to edit and convert to profile. We want to do this in sRGB because that's the web standard. Hit OK and then we need to save this image. I'm going to hit Control Shift S to bring up Save As. We'll select JPEG and then hit Save. Right here we can change the quality. I'm just going to leave that at 10. That's pretty good. And hit OK. The final step is Control W to close the document. Saving No. So now it's recorded every single step we've made. So like image size, and it's kept all that. It's kept our 1200, place, set selection, all of these. Saving as JPEG quality 10, 
and close, saving no. Right now is a good time to make sure our action plays properly. We can either go to File, Automate, and Bash, or we can go over to Bridge, and this is the way I like to do it because I can select a certain group of images and do the batch on those. Within Photoshop, we have to do an entire folder. So I'm just going to select this image here, go to Tools, Photoshop, and Batch. You'll notice that the appropriate set and action are already selected since they are selected in the Photoshop Actions panel. If not, you just navigate to the proper action and set. We want to suppress the File Open Options dialog, so if you have RAW files, it just won't pop up with the Camera RAW window. We also want to override action save as commands. This will make it so it uses the save as settings in our action. We can just leave it as the document name and extension or we could customize it if we wanted to. I'm just going to leave it at the default. We want to set the destination to folder and we can choose our folder. I already have it selected here. So now we're all set up, we can just hit OK. Batch will open the image for us, the action will play and then it'll save. Alright, let's go back over to Bridge and our JPEG file is there. As you can see, it's 1200 by 1798 and that's the size we wanted. We'll delete this JPEG for now. The next step is to make a specific action for our portrait orientation photos as well. So we'll do the same exact process again. Create a new action, we'll just name this one Portrait. The next step, we need to resize our image. This time we want to use the Width. Once we've got the image resized, we need to go to File, Place Embedded, select our PSD document, hit Enter, make a selection, align with the bottom and the left edge, deselect, transform, hit Enter again, make any adjustments we need to the opacity and the blend mode, layer, flatten image, edit, convert to profile, save as, JPEG, JPEG Options, Quality 10, Control W or Command W to close, saving, no. You can hit stop on our action. You may be wondering, so do I have to separate my landscape and portrait orientation photos? Actually, no. All we have to do is record another action, name it what we want, hit record, then we come up here to our action menu, insert conditional, if current document is landscape, then play our landscape action. Else, play portrait. Okay, so now if we play this action, it'll decide whether our image is landscape or portrait orientation and play the appropriate action for us. So, let's test everything out. Go over to Bridge, and I'm going to delete this JPEG that it just created here. I'm going to select my two RAW files, and we actually created our action in such a way that we can save any file type, but in this case they're RAW files. So we'll just select these, go to Tools, Photoshop, Batch, then we select the appropriate set, Action, and hit OK. It'll open the images and save them for us. Let's go over to Bridge and check what it did. Alright, so we got a JPEG and a JPEG, and if you notice, it's 1200 on the short side, 1200 on the short side. Now you may notice the watermark looks a little bigger on the landscape orientation image versus the portrait orientation image. Well, if we went to Photoshop and our portrait action, in our place step, we could change the size and you might type in 115% and constrain the proportions. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and if you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.